Okay, in this video I'll be discussing the computation of the mean and standard deviation. I'll also give a basic interpretation of uh, each of these terms. Uh, we'll start by looking at a set of data. Uh, let's just suppose that you have, uh, you're have you teaching three classes and you gave the same test to three of your classes. And these were the scores on test one. Data one represents the scores on test one. Data two represents the scores on test two and data three, the scores on the, on the third test. And you wanted to find out how the students did, compare the results. Well, most of the time you're interested in the average. So you could find the, the mean, which is one type of average. Here's the formula down here. I'm using mu, sometimes you'll use x bar to represent the, uh, the mean. So in this case, take the summation of the scores, divide by the total number of scores, and that gives you the mean. That'll give you an idea as to how the students did. Well, if you add these up and divide by 10, because that's, that's how, how many scores you have, you get 450 divided by 10, which is 45. So the average for the first set of data is 45. If you look at the second set, they're all 45. So obviously the average is going to be 45 or the mean will be 45. If you look at the third set, these add up to 450 also. So divide by 10, you get 45. So they all have the same average. But you can see there's a difference in the spread of the scores. You can see that, of course, obviously in data two, there's no spread. All the scores are the same. Data 1 goes from 100 to a low of 10. This one goes from 80. The third one goes from 80 to a score of 10. So there's also dispersion here. It appears that the first set has more dispersion. Now, obviously the mean computes the average. The standard deviation measures the extent of dispersion or variation of these scores. Uh, so that's one measure that we're going to look at. Okay, here are your formulas for standard deviation. Most of the time you'll be you'll be taking a sample and computing the standard deviation and then you're going to make some generalizations on the population. So normally you're going to start with a what is called a sample deviation formula. This, this, this one right here, this one you may be using, and this one right here is for the entire population. So for the most part, in basic statistics classes, this is the one you're going to use right here. Okay, so if I actually compute these, over here, the standard deviation for the first one, using both formulas, uh, I get 32.02 and 33.75. The second one is a result of this formula right here. So I use both formulas just uh, in case you want to know what it comes out to. So 33.75 is the standard deviation for the uh, first set of data. Obviously for the second one, there's no deviation, so it's going to be zero. Standard deviation is zero. And for the third set of data, it's 21.73 using uh, this formula here. So you can see that there's more dispersion or variation in scores in the first set. And that's what the standard deviation does. The mean can tell you something about a set of data, but the standard deviation can tell you a little bit more. It can tell you, it, it tells you the extent to which the scores or values deviate, deviate from, the, from the mean. Now you can compute the standard deviation. The formula is a little bit more involved than it, what, than it is for the mean. That's pretty straightforward. Add up the scores, divide by the total number. Uh, I'm going to set it up or show you uh, for the first one. If you wanted to do the standard deviation for the first one, uh, here's, here's what you would set up. So you would take each score, okay? So column X here represents the scores. And then obviously the mean we said was 45. That's represented by mu. Sometimes I use x bar. Okay, I'm using mu here. 
so it tells me then, okay, subtract 45 from 100, I get this. Subtract 45 from 90, I get the 45. Subtract 45 from 80, I get this, and so on. Okay, so that's what this column is giving you. Okay. Now, if you add these up, this will always come out to zero. Assuming they're exact values. Now, sometimes uh, you're going to have decimals. So there might be some kind of error here. So this might not be exactly zero, but if you have whole numbers here, this will always add up to zero. Okay, then over here, this says you, every number to the left is squared. So 55 squared is 3025. 45 squared is 2025. 35 squared is 1225, and so on. Okay, so let's look at this formula. What is it saying? It says, take the sum of these differences squared. So it says square, and then add. So basically, it wants you to add all of these values right there. That's what you get, 10,250. And then divide that quantity by one less than the number of scores. In this case, it was 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9. So you divide this by 9. So here's the formula right here. Okay, taking this formula right here, I get S is equal to the square root Okay, so I have to take the square root of that value, the square root of 10,250 divided by 9. So take 10,250 divided by 9, then take the square root of that, and to two places you get 3375, which is what I had over here. Now this, this can be very tedious, okay? So I, as a, as a mathematics instructor, I do not oppose uh, using technology wherever possible so anything you can do in the calculator is especially if it's just basic arithmetic uh, use your calculator so I'm going to show you how to do it in the calculator this is the TI 83 plus so I'm going to go to stat and then one is edit okay so I want to hit enter and then you can use any one of these I'm going to use the first one so I'm going to enter the values so uh, one zero zero then we hit enter 90 so obviously I'm doing the first set of data and then 80 hit enter 50 hit enter and 40 enter 30 20 and then 20 again and 10 10 again and there we have it okay so that's my data so now I'm going to go second Well, I don't want second, I just want stat. So just hit the stat function here. And then I'm going to go over to calculate. Okay. So the first one that's highlighted is one variable statistics. Uh, in this case, we hit enter. Okay. Now, if you had several columns there on, on that uh, menu, you would put the, the column number. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put second and then L1 because that's the one I'm working with. Uh, hit enter. Okay, so this gives me all the data that I want. So this tells me that the mean for that distribution is 45. The sum of the values, if you need to know that, is 450. And of course, remember, 450 divided by 10, that's 45. And then the uh, sum of the squares, we don't need that for this, this computation, but it gives you that there. And then it gives you the sample deviation. 33.74 or 33.75 uh, if you round off and then the population standard deviation is 32.01 which I what which is what I had and I guess let's see I guess it's 02 if you round off to two places 32.02 and there you have it. So that's the way you can compute standard deviation on your calculator. And uh, 
as an instructor, uh, I highly recommend using the calculator for numerical calculations. Uh, it, it gets pretty tedious if you have a lot of set of data and your instructor asks you to do it manually like this. Okay. But the main point here I'm trying to emphasize also is the uh, significance of uh, knowing what the mean tells you about the data and knowing what the standard deviation tells you about the data. Uh, standard deviation is important in noting the variance or dispersion of the scores around the, uh, around the mean. Well, if you want to see some more videos like this, uh, please subscribe. I'll be putting out uh, videos and selected topics in statistics, uh, algebra, uh, trigonometry, calculus throughout. I have another uh, several channels uh, where I have some more videos, but I just started this uh, channel a few days ago, so I've got to believe this is the second video. So I hope you subscribe. Uh, all you need is a Google account, and it is free. So uh, please do so, and I'll see you later.